Hey guys, it's a little while since we've done an update video and we have been super busy. It's the warm season. We have tons of camping trips and uh, vacations and stuff going on. It is the 13th inch. Yeah. It is June 13th, 2018. Um, we want to start showing some of the stuff we've got going on. We're really proud of it. We know our garden and our yard's not that big and not as amazing as some of the yards we've seen with you guys and stuff, but in order to make this a little bit easier, the house is the castle, of course. And it's just a fun little way our family does. Here's our greenhouses. This wall right here would be the west wall. It faces west and it is all the peppers. We called it the demon wall for a second, but we're gonna, we're gonna just refer to this wall as the west wall. This over here, which is primarily tomatoes, is what we will call the east wall. So I'll try to do updates on the east wall, the west wall. We have a lot going on. I don't want to make 10, 15 minute videos. I'd like to think that you guys are out there growing your own things and making your own guards fantastic. We tend to fall in the category more of watching things and learning things less than we do videos. But we've really appreciated getting to experience and see your guys' yards and stuff. So this update right here is just kind of a, to show you an overview of the yard. I will try to avoid catching my girlfriend's butt on camera. But anyhow, this update will be about the gate. The gate is the back aisle here. We put this shade cloth off. It really has helped now that the summertime heat starting to kick up but it is also made it a lot cooler back here for when we start things but this is the gate the north gate thanks you guys love you all right the first thing we got here at the northeast side is kiddos three sisters garden this one here and this one here are glass gem and these all of their alternating two are strawberry popcorn and this is a black diamond watermelon it is going to have to be grown for one giant watermelon because as a lot of you guys know we don't have space so black diamond watermelon glass gem corn this is just a oregano to help with pest control a little bit we're not sure how far along it will get but in these little gaps here, we had planted peas. They didn't go, planted them again, still too cold, went too early, didn't go. And uh, possible another problem that I'll mention in just a minute. But then we also have uh, just replanted them for a third time. So if the peas don't go this time, it's a two sisters garden with oregano. Anyways, but that's the container corn. Um, it's kind of like a reference. That's my hand. They are really, really strong and healthy looking. I don't know a lot about growing corn. I know a little bit about watermelon, but there probably will be some pests and challenges that I haven't seen yet with corn. Same way with uh, potatoes, but there is Kiddo's three sisters garden. He's only got two sisters, but I have three. So glass gem corn, strawberry popcorn, black diamond watermelon, plain oregano and then also hopefully some Oregon giant peas next thanks guys next up is the two volunteer buckets this one right here some of you guys may have heard of uh, sprouts I believe they were bought by Amazon we usually don't shop those organic stores and things like that we like to take as much of a local naturalistic approach as possible but this is blue Tucson rosemary and since our rosemary didn't winter over we were excited to get it and this stuff it smells fantastic even in comparison to rosemary it's a rosemary that it's the best smelling rosemary i've smelled blue tucson this around here is what is uh german chamomile and it is starting to struggle i mentioned the biological mat earlier maybe and it's this stuff here what we have is an ash tree back here this ash tree i can tell it's an ash this is how you tell if you have an ash tree or not. If it's got alternating leaves down the branch like that, let me see if I can find a better example. See the alternating? 
or not alternating, they're uh, even. Even, 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 even. If your leaves don't do that, it's not an ash tree, from what I understand. So that's the way you'll look. If it was a little more uneven, like say like this and this, then it would be not an ash. That's the way you can always determine what kind it is. Having said that, this is an emerald ash tree that's been branched into several, encompasses the whole yard. It's been a curse and a blessing. What it does though every year is it drops this biological material. A lot of times those little birds and even the Eurasian collar doves and pigeons and things like that eat the, eat the seeds from this tree. So we don't really have a problem with it seeding all over us but it does dump this material and it's hard to explain it's like that all over everything here's a good example right here these things are the twigs where the seeds and the material and the flowers are coming from if this lands on a plant and dries it strangles it it'll try to strangle sprouts and plants and stuff like that and it's literally dumped this stuff a hundred percent all over the yard and then to make it worse it has like a grass effect if you can I don't know if you can really see that and this has just been watered so that's probably not the best example but it's got an effect where it retains this moisture and rots and it draws in tons and tons of earthworms are coming up and eating the fresh seeds and tons and tons of tree bugs are landing down i am thinking that we might have a blessing right here though there's almost no way you're going to get a good sight of that anyways those guys we were worried about because they're kind of like mite-ish looking, like little spider mites. But watching their behavior after a little while, they tend to patrol right around here. We've seen them on the plants, but we have not seen any damage with the plants are. So what these are, there's a couple more running across right here. These are predatory mites. They will eliminate any mite problem. They will explode in growth. Uh, I think they some people also refer to them as beneficial nematodes and if that's the case we call them battle toads anyways but these battle toads here the predatory mites will wipe out spider mites first and when they run out of that they'll go after aphids um, I think that what they are basically feeding on right now is the tree bugs that are coming down with the biological material that is creating basically a grass effect. You can almost cut and peel back an entire layer of that stuff. Where it is landing, it is just causing like a hard crust that is just wiping things out. But that's why the German chamomile is struggling. We've got a several areas that we've cleared out. I cannot believe how wet this garden looks like that. But Blue Tucson Rosemary, chamomile. We're gonna plant some more chamomile probably in here that might not make it by the end of the year, but these ones hopefully will pull through if uh, this stuff's broken up a little bit. In here we got just some sweet basil. We'll probably put some more basil in here. That is the only moringa we've had come up yet, but I have planted another seed there and another four right here. This one, the shell was shucked, it was soaked overnight and then it was put in the ground and I don't think that the worms, it may sound really, really bizarre, but we have thousands and thousands of worms in this one bin. They have exploded and I think it come from using local worm castings. I think the local worm castings still had worms in them. So that might be something you guys want to notice and stuff. Worms, they can wipe out peas, corn, moringa, um, gourds. As soon as those seeds start to soften up, if they don't have any other biological material to eat, they will eat that seed because I've pulled a corn seed out before with dozens and dozens of earthworms feeding off of it while it was rotting. So, happy to have at least one Moringa and another four or five on the way. Won't give up on that, you guys. But there's two more. Love you. All right, the next three are 
angels, kiddos, and mine. This one right here is a Densiformis U. We got it the beginning of June last year for kiddo. He really, really liked it. It looks spiky, but when you touch it, it's actually really, really soft. And it's called a Densiformis U, and they can get pretty big, but we're going to keep it in the container as part of a sort of living fence. I'm not sure. The way this one fluffs out, it looks like it looks like a puppy dog almost. And to pet it, it's really cool to pet, you guys. I don't know if the video could ever do it justice, but this is really cool. But this is a Densiformis U. Around it, we put some dill. Dill's really good at uh, helping with pests and stuff like that. We're not really concerned about it going. If it does, then I think we're good on dill for life because the seeding of it and the spreading of dill is really really pretty known by most gardeners i think but really soft really cool it's like petting a shaggy dog and that's kiddo's plant from last year last year for father's day my wife got me this green beauty boxwood it has been a slow grower we got it in father's day so it was later in the year when the growing season had already started this is all new growth coming up off of it its nodes look kind of a little bit bizarre it looks like it's almost dying but that's actually a node forming but really sturdy stem in around it we have a massive amount of bullseye toothache plant so it looks like we're gonna have some of those by the end of the year which is really cool because some of these things our goal every year is to try to grow things we haven't grown and a lot of these things aren't we can also use these once they're full and uh, propagate them from cut clippings and cuttings and stuff like that and be able to spread these throughout other people's yards and landscapes. So that's the Green Beauty Boxwood. It's a little bit behind compared to the others. It's got lots of new growth right here. And I got that one for Father's Day. That one belongs to UT. So Kiddo Densiformis U, UT Green Beauty Boxwood. And Angel has probably the prettiest one of all. It is a golden unanimous plant. And it has nothing with it. Last year we grew a bunch of uh, coleus around it. This right here, it likes pretty good sun. It can handle tons and tons of sun. It wintered over for us. All three of these did. Wintered over for us. And it can handle quite a bit, but if you keep it in mild sun, the more mild sun and the more shady areas you can keep it in, the more coloration you can got. Like these leaves right here, solid green. These ones came out all this bright yellow, but are starting to green out as they get fuller. Some of them have like a green with a dark green on the inside. Some of them are light green with a green inside. But it's just a really, this is a really sturdy, durable, cool plant. But that's the Golden Unanimous. It's doing excellent. We could create several plants from this right here. I think eventually we'll try to do it into a ball shape. But uh, those are the three. Mother's Day, Father's Day, and Kids Day last year. Thanks, you guys. All right, I'm going to try to cover the mints and the balm really quick in this back corner. This is the chocolate mint. It is in need of cutting. We'll probably cut it, dry it. And I've heard that you can dry mints, crush them up, and put them within your plants, and it'll somewhat help as a pest resistant and a help with nitrogen a little bit. So this is the chocolate mint. This one's my favorite. <coughs> I cough every time I come over here by the mint, huh? <laughs> Anyways, this is the sweet mint. This one right here is the sweet mint. Both of these winter every year. We're not even concerned about these. I could put these out in the middle of a snowstorm and not even worry about them. Every year, this one's the slowest one to arrive back though. So we're always like, what about it? What about it? But now we don't even worry anymore. We know that mint's, mint's going to be here no matter what until we pull it. But there's the sweet mint. And I think that's probably kiddos. One of kiddos. There's our new spearmint that we got from a nursery. A really sturdy plant. And it is trying to burrow this really thick stalk out here. So this plant is taking off like mint does. But it's nice to come out here and be able to pull a leaf and chew on it or just be able to smell it. Mint's really, really good for you guys. It grows really super, super easy. There's quite a few uses for it. 
You can just boil it. You can just pull this off, boil it in your thing, and make your entire house smell excellent. And then there's the lemon balm. That's like the queen of our herbs. This stuff right here is a... I wouldn't call it a painkiller. It's more of a muscle relaxer or a de-stressor. What would you call it? Anti-anxiety is what my wife calls it. And a natural sleep aid. Lemon balm right here. This stuff right here, if you're having a bad day, make yourself a lemon balm tea, maybe with some natural honey. And uh, I don't know, I, I was having a bad day one time. My wife made me some of this stuff. I told her, no way, I'm stressed out. I've had way too much coffee. My mind's going a thousand miles per hour. She made me some of this. We started a movie up 10 minutes into the movie. I don't remember the rest. So I don't know if she roofied me or if it's this stuff here. But one of the, one of the things that I know is that when she gives me this tea, it helps. Each person's body, I'm sure, is 100% different. Some people may take a ton of this and it may not work at all. But for me specifically in my physiology, it works excellent. And I would suggest anybody else that might want some kind of like natural remedy, anti-anxiety around, give this a try. It might work for you the same. But lemon balm, spearmint, sweet mint, chocolate mint. Thanks, you guys. All right, last up on the gate, we have the wild bucket. We call this the wild one. It is basically, we throw garbage seeds out there that basically are going bad, that might not make it. Wildflower seeds. We'll plug plants in there that have seen the last of their days to see if they can survive and maybe seed. Um, it was like two years ago, we threw sweet William seeds at the end of the season in here and they have continued to reseed. So as you can see, the wild bucket is primarily dominated by these sweet williams. See, it, it is suppressing light and some of the other stuff going on in this bucket. But with the way that this one right here, for example, 100% all the flowers are done in it. That's a pretty flower. We could take it right here, clip it, put it into a little jar of water and give it away as a pretty flower or bushel several of them together so these ones are at their prime they're still beautiful why we got an opportunity we'll give them away as gifts we'll clip them down and it'll also help to clear out what's going on in here and here is some dollar store gladiolas i think it looks like blade grass quite a bit but i think it was gladiola gladiola bulbs from the dollar store and i don't know that's pretty cool this right here is kiddo's red velvet sunflower. There's another one right here. Um, this one right here, I believe, came from last year, but it was mums, some uh, fall or winter mums flowers that were uh, uh, pretty brown. They weren't as quite as colorful as a lot of the flowers and stuff that we grow, but that one's still surviving. We got some chives and onions and stuff in here that are still surviving that were literally like in our refrigerator or cupboard and they were tossed in here a couple years ago and they're still alive so every once in a while we can come out here and get an onion that right there is the stick from a lupine but all kinds sorts of sweet williams all sorts of crazy stuff sometimes i come out here and i just look around and explore because that bucket definitely definitely has a lot of interest it's the only thing really flowering that brings in pollinators, but we almost get known anyways. So I'm pretty sure I'll have to do some hand pollinating. Maybe I'll do another video on that. But try to keep it as less sexy as possible for you guys. <laughs> this is the gate. So at the gate we have glass gem and strawberry popcorn with a black diamond watermelon and peas, hopefully. Where this old Vierte Gardenia is, we're going to clip it, pull it up, and put a cup with holes in it so we can water the cup and get it to the soil. And this is this and this are kind of like volunteer buckets this year. The rosemary takes its permanent rosemary. If anything in here, this will probably have the cherry bush that I got from my sister in there. 
So the cup will come out, the cherry bush will go in when it's time and everything's ready. Otherwise, until then, we're gonna pull that part out. We're afraid that its rotting roots may be exploding a earthworm problem or a redworm problem. Just regular worms, but when you got a thousand of them in one spot, they're gonna eat anything biological and rotting. And if they run out of that, they're gonna eat whatever else they can find. But kind of cool, but haven't heard a lot online about earthworms and how they can uh, affect that stuff. I think there was a guy recently that had a bunch of potatoes. Oh, and I can't remember the name, the name of his channel, but he had a bunch of potatoes that he pulled up that looked like they had worms that had eaten. And that could just simply be from the regular earthworm. Everybody says how great they are to have in their garden. And I 100% agree with that. I would not get rid of them if I could. I'm just saying that you know if you're trying to start new seeds outdoors and you have a lot of earthworms in your soil they will go after the seed if they have nothing else so there we have it the wild bucket chocolate mint sweet mint spearmint lemon balm golden unanimous green beauty boxwood with bullseye toothache densiformis u with dill blue tucson rosemary with chamomile will be a cherry bush but until then it's got some sweet basil and some moringa hopefully and oregon giant peas with glass gem strawberry popcorn and the watermelon so that is basically the gate in the corner that's an update I know that I've gotten about 20 or 30 minutes of video, so I'm going to go and try to edit this so I'm not wasting all your guys' day. But anyhow, we are super busy. We are always behind and ahead at the same time. We're having fun making these videos. It's a little bit different for us. We're just home video people and try to keep things as simple and basic as possible, but this year, is something else entirely okay. here is the angel and demon tray here's my angel pepper tray and here's my girl demon tomato tray i know you guys ain't trying to give her tomatoes spider plant this is a silver splash pothos the herb box is loving the sun it's so thick that's our herb tray we're gonna start putting the plugs throughout the garden I'll show more on these greenhouses later for now though like let me see how this works so you just What? Oh, I don't think I got it. Anyhow, don't do that too often. It uses a lot of the plant's energy. Anyhow. Water and some peppers. Yep. We don't think that is a black pearl. In the seeds of the black pearl, maybe we missed did one, but I highly, highly doubt it. I'll watch the video again, but I don't think we did. I think that's a different seed in with the black pearl. As long as we have at least three of these black pearl in here, though, plenty happy. That's actually really cool. That could be a habanero, that could be a jalapeno, that could be a rare pepper that I've never seen before. So, actually kind of cool. Not even one bit concerned about getting a different seed. Love you guys. Thank you. Love you, hon. You. you having a good day? Yeah. I'm recording you right now. Yeah. Uh-huh. thank you. Can we have a pretty smile? <laughs> I love you. Thanks, you guys. 
Thanks for showing us your guys' yards too. The personal experience is amazing. Love ya.